Hello, uh, this is the third video for C4, the periodic table, mainly focusing on covalent bonding, but also including the arrangement and structure of the periodic table. What we have here is an abridged version of the periodic table, with the emission of the transition metals that fit between two, group 2 and group 3. The reason that this has been included is because with this abridged version of the periodic table and any periodic table, you can identify the structure of any element i.e. the number of electron shells and the number of electrons in its outer shell from the location of the periodic table. The first thing to be aware of are the periods of the periodic table, hence the name. The one that everybody misses out is the top one. That's because the top one contains just two elements because the first shell of the periodic table has just two spaces. The period that an element belongs to tells you how many electron shells that element has in its structure. So, for example, bromine here has four electron shells. Lead has six. Nitrogen has two. Gallium has four, etc. The second thing to be aware of is the group number at the top of the periodic table, going from one through to zero. This tells you the number of electrons in the outermost shell. So all the elements in group 1 have one electron in their outermost shell. Group 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The important distinction is group 0, which is sometimes called group 8. The reason it's not called group 8 is because helium here, it does not have 8 in its outer shell. It has 2 because there are only 2 spaces. So because of that discrepancy between 2 and 8, this group is given the name group 0 to avoid confusion. So now we can identify, using the periodic table, the number of shells in the electron structure of any atom and the number of electrons in its outer shell. So if we take, for example, chlorine. Chlorine has three electron shells and it's in group 7, so it has seven in its outer shell. Tin has five electron shells and four in its outer shell. Magnesium three electron shells, two electrons in its outer shell. You can do that for any of these. It might at this point be worth pausing and seeing if you can identify how many electrons and how many electron shells are in any of the elements covered in the periodic table. I wouldn't bother including the transition metals at this stage, um, this block in the middle, but for any of the other elements you should be able to identify A, the number of shells from the period number and B, the number of electrons in its outer shell from the group number. Uh, challenge yourself with a friend, see if you can trip each other up, ask things like the number of shells, the number of periods that say phosphorus has. Phosphorus is in period three, so it's got three shells, it's got five in its outer shell. The key outcomes for this aspect of the work is to be able to draw dot and cross diagrams for simple molecules, to identify the properties of covalent molecules, and to try and relate the structure of the molecules to the properties that they have. So as previously stated, covalent molecules, covalent compounds, are made out of non-metals, and they occur when electrons are shared between elements to give full outer shells of electrons. You will be familiar with them before and drawn them as lines in a molecular structure, for example here in water, H2O, and here in carbon dioxide. These lines represent a shared pair of electrons. So here, where we have two lines, we have two shared pair of pairs of electrons. These bonds are strong. The intramolecular forces are strong, the intramolecular bonds. So we have strong molecules, but there are weak interactions between the molecules. It's not like in ionic bonds where you have uh, positive and negative charges are interacting and attracting each other. So you end up with distinct molecules. Because of the weak intermolecular forces, the forces between molecules, you end up with um, compounds that have really low melting points and really low boiling points. Also, unlike ionic compounds where there are charged particles, there are no positively or negatively charged 
particles in a covalent compound. So these molecules do not conduct electricity, whether solid, liquid, dissolved, whatever. So as I stated, covalent bonds occur between non-metal elements. Essentially, this group of about 20 elements on the right hand side of the periodic table, discounting the, uh, the noble gases because they already have full outer shells that so tend not to be involved in any compounds. You can identify the number of bonds that an atom is able to make by its position in the periodic table. The number of spaces in the outermost shell of electrons tells you the number of bonds that can be made. So all the group 7s can make one bond, all the group 6 can make two bonds, if they're in group 5 they can make three covalent bonds, and if they're in group 4 they can make four covalent bonds. It's for this reason that carbon is identified as being a very important fundamental building block when we talk about um, making compounds. So this is hydrogen. Each of these hydrogens has brought to this situation one electron. These electrons are shared between both of the hydrogen atoms. So this hydrogen here has two electrons in its outer shell and this hydrogen here also has two electrons in its outer shell. They're shared between the atoms, bonding them together. If you want to write this out, draw this out, you just simply H with a single bond joined to another H. Carbon dioxide here is a little more complicated. In this situation, the crosses represent the electrons that originally belonged to the carbon and the dots represent the electrons that initially belonged to the oxygen. Each oxygen atom can make two bonds and the carbon in the centre can make four. So, the carbon makes two of its bonds with one of the oxygens, hence each atom gives two electrons to the bond and on the other side the same occurs. You have to remember that each line in the bond represents two electrons, one from each atom involved in the bond. So you can never have an odd number of electrons in the overlapped area of a covalent bond. And here's some to try for yourself. Remember each bond represents one electron from each atom in the bond. The electrons are shared and it only occurs between non-metals. That's probably a really important point for going to an exam. If you're being asked to draw a covalent bond, because people do very easily get confused between this and ionic bond, if it's between two non-metals it will be covalent and if it's between a metal and a non-metal it will be ionic. So try hydrogen H2, chlorine Cl2, oxygen O2, nitrogen N2 and then have a go at methane which is CH4 and carbon dioxide which you've already seen. Thank you for watching, if you've got any further questions please see me, I'm Mr Clee or any of your science teachers.